G'day everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, I figured I'd head back to basics and talk about one of the more important parts of blacksmithing and bladesmithing, which is repeatability. It is something that a lot of us tend to forget about when we get into the swing of things, especially those of us who are artistic bladesmiths. We tend to focus more on making individual unique pieces. But it's really important to learn how to create things the same every time from the face of the hammer. And it's not as easy as you might think. Even I, with lots of practice, still have trouble, as you'll see in this video. Today I'm starting with a piece of eighth inch by inch and a half bar stock, 1084. And I'm forging it down to around 21 millimeters, or just under an inch, by five millimeters, or just under a quarter of an inch. The reason I'm doing this is because one of the things that I want to practice my repeatability of is forging a piece of stock down to a different size of stock. And one of the most important parts of bladesmithing that I see a lot of people uh, fail at is starting with the right size of bar stock for the blade that they're intending to create. If you start forging a blade that you intend to have quite narrow out of some very wide stock, then it's important that you actually narrow down the stock to your desired bar width before starting the blade than starting the blade and then trying to narrow it down later because the later on in the process of forging any kind of shape in a, in a piece of material, the harder it gets to reverse a lot of issues. So moving steel down to its desired parent bar stock length and width is incredibly useful as a bladesmith and as a blacksmith to getting repeatable results. In this case, Forging on a very thin stock also teaches hammer control and control of lipping, cupping, that kind of thing that comes with forging quite thin stock. Uh, normally I would advise against forging on such narrow stock because it will prevent you from getting uh, your desired results, especially as a, a beginner smith, uh, because it wants to fold on itself rather than forging. But learning how to manipulate thin stock like this will teach you a next level of hammer control. And getting nice, flat, and even bar stock just with a hammer and anvil is a skill unto itself. I'm using a set of uh, vernier calipers just to check my sizes, check that my bar is parallel in both dimensions, and uh, happy to say it was. And that is the start of my repeatability, is can I recreate that the next time, and the next time, and the next time. Now that I have the bar though, I'm going to start forging the blade, and the first thing I'm going to do of course is to forge the tip. Now, because I want to make three blades almost exactly identical, or if I was trying to be super accurate, exactly identical, I'm going to use measurements. Now, I'm not going to use my vernier caliper and get super micrometer with it, but I am going to be using measurements on the anvil to denote how far I want my tapers, how wide I want certain things, and that's going to help me with getting repeatable results out of my forgings. So once I have a point established, I'm then going to decide how long I want that nose curve, the tip curve to be, and I'm going to mark that on my anvil so that I can get that repeatably.
with the length established, I can push that curve back until I have the desired length of tip curve, and then I can move on to establishing my distal taper. Like I said before, this material is five millimeters thick. And so therefore I'm going to establish a taper from where I want the blade to start, which is uh, around about four inches back from the tip down to the tip, which is going to be from five millimeters down to two millimeters at the tip. And I'll check that with a vernier caliper once I believe I'm close. Along with my repeatability, I'm also trying for cleanliness of forging. So you'll notice that my pieces are planished smooth and they are relatively even. Everything's nice and square and that's on purpose. I'm trying to create repeatable clean results because that is my desire for my particular skill. You could only decide to forge the rough shape and then grind it out. That's totally up to you and that's totally fine there's nothing that says that you have to do it any certain way it's just that this is the way that i have decided i want to pursue my craft so i'm cutting in the plunge cuts as you can see here and i was cutting them in square i actually ended up cutting them at a backwards rake later on but um again just practicing that nice even hammer blow nice accurate hammer blows getting that nice sharp plunge cut and getting the edge to drop down for me because this is going to be a relatively simple full tang hunter because I wanted something that I could repeat but also something that didn't take me a very long time to make. So now we're just going to push those bevels all the way up to the tip and we'll be ready to straighten it out and turn it around for the tang. Repeatability is important even if you're making only one of something because the ability to repeat things is not necessarily inherent in making one thing and then copying it. It's about get, achieving a desired result from an idea. So I had an idea of what shape and size I wanted this blade to be before I even took hammer to steel. And I didn't draw it out, but I already knew in my head what I wanted to see at the end. So... That being said, when I came to the next couple of blades, I didn't hold them up against the first blade to test. All I did was follow the measurements that I had originally come out with. And that's what I'm talking about when I say repeatability. You can repeat things by using a, uh, you know, a form, a preform, uh, or a, something to check against. But if you have the ability to recreate something simply from the measurements that you take uh, in your head, or, you know, perhaps on paper, then when it comes to making a single piece or a, or a unique run of something, it becomes so much easier to make that thing as your mind Im imagines it, rather than kind of flouncing around until you finally get something that's close. So this practice of repeatability isn't necessarily about repeating this specific design. It's about repeating the certain skills that allow you to achieve the results you're aiming for.
Now I'm taking a measurement of the handle material length and the blade width to make sure that I can repeat those in the future. And then I'm going to cut it off the bar. Now normally when I'm forging a full tang, if you've watched my How to Forge series before, you'll know that I forge the tang first and then the blade, but in this case, because I was forging a very specific style, I wanted to forge the blades first. And uh, it didn't really detract from anything to forge the blades first. So uh, yeah, now we're going to expand that butt a little bit to give it a backwards taper which is something I like in most of my handles to have a little bit of a flare towards the back end so that it doesn't come flying out of your hand when you're uh, when you're using it. And then I'm going to taper that tang because at the moment the tang is only about three and a half inches long and I want a four and a half to four and three quarter inch tang at the end. Now I did cut these a little bit short but because I cut the first one a little short, I decided to cut all of them a little short because this was a practice in repeatability, not in forging a good knife. Uh, realistically, these were test pieces. And uh, despite the fact that they came out looking okay, I was more interested in trying to repeat the result results of the previous knife. With the first blade finished, we're now going to move on to the next couple of blades. And because you've already seen me forge the first one at normal speed, we're going at five times speed through the next two. Drawing out the material, making sure that we're the right size of bar stock, drawing the point, running out the curve, drawing the bevels, then switch, uh, cutting it off, flipping it around to the tang, and drawing out the tapered tang to finalize the blade and you'll see that we came out with relatively accurate results like I said even I struggled with getting perfectly repeatable results uh, there were a few, you know a couple of minor differences a millimeter off here and there uh, especially in uh, blade and tang length uh, rather than width but um, yeah no overall I was fairly pleased with my progress and part of this whole video is to encourage you to practice your repeatability whether that be in leaves or bottle openers whatever you're making try and make three of the same thing and try and get them as accurate as possible and learn how to read the material before you even pick up the hammer know how you're going to achieve the result that you want and that is how you achieve true repeatability And this is where you really start to see how well you can read the material and how well you can repeat results with just your hammer and eye. And uh, I was surprised at how much I need to improve my repeatability, despite the fact that I've had so much practice. So you can be sure that I'll be doing this again to make sure that I'm getting the repeatable results that I want from my work.
So here we have the finished blades. Now you will notice there is some variance, especially in the tang and blade length, and that just comes down to not doing my measurements completely. Uh, I think the smallest one on the left there is actually the last one that I made, and it was because I took a break and I completely forgot to write anything down. That being said, I would like to say a huge thank you to my patrons. Without them, I would not be where I am now, and I would not be able to create the content that I do. If you want to join my Patreon, the link is down in the description. But you can also hit the uh, link in the cards at the end. I would also like to encourage you to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell icon to be notified of when I upload new videos, because I have more educational content coming out just like this in the very near future. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and get out there, make something for yourself, maybe practice some repeatability, and I'll see you next time.